Hi, and welcome back. In this session, we're going to be discussing arrays. It's just a real quick introduction and not very in-depth, but enough to get you going where you need to go. So, what is an array? Well, an array in C, an array in C, if you can think of it like if you had, for example, a set of boxes next to each other, the same distance apart, well, actually right next to each other. So, for example, when we say this, right, we say int, and we have an array, and we have um, ages, and then we do this, and we say 10. This gives us a block of memory, contiguous memory. Now, if you remember, an integer is composed of four bytes. So four bytes in memory, and another four bytes, and another four bytes. So four times 10, 40 bytes joined next to each other, each one of them holding a value to it, to the to one of the, the elements of the array. So we say, for example, here, and we say ages, and we were to do this, this is to initialize an array, and we say, for example, one, 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 let's go in order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So those are the ages. So now with the array, we can do things like, for example, access elements of the array, something like this. So if I do age zero, and remember you access it from zero, is ages zero, and guess what it'll print? I think you can guess that it'll print one because one is the first value in the array. It's, this is at element zero, this is at element one, which is the second value, and it's two. So if I run this right now, it should print one. And it does. So I can do that here with the other ages. And I can say H3 and H5, and let's do 5, and maybe, oh, wrong one, 3, and then, for example, 5. And when I do that, oh, I forget my infamous new line character. What did I say? Um, why did I do that? And you can see uh, the zero has one in it and the three has four and that's because it's zero base. So you can access elements of the array within that. So let's say for example that uh, I wanted to access all the elements of the array. So remember, we can loop through this and say for integer i equals zero, i less than 10, because that is how many are in the element. So this is going to go from zero to nine. Be careful not to go beyond the bounds of the array, because if you do see uh, in its power, as I've been saying uh, previously, it's so powerful, it lets you get away with it, and some weird things can happen. So you may step somewhere and who knows where in memory. So just make sure that you know where the bounds are. So for example, in this case, we say 10, and we say I++, plus plus, and we have our for loop, and we take one of these, just copy it. And this time, instead of hardwiring the ages, I can say ages, and I can say percent D here, right? And I can say I, that's for my first parameter, right? First parameter is for the index. And then ages, and instead of five, I say I, and this is going to print, it should print all my ages here. 
so you can see zero, one, two, three. Ooh, why did it do? Oh, okay, I still have the old one. So it actually, it actually had. Uh, let me add a few so it's like we can separate the readability. Well, not there. Maybe here. Flash in, flash in, and let's rerun it. And you can see where I have all my ages, one through ten, in the array, and I can access them by their index. And because, like I said, it's a contiguous block of memory, you can access directly anything in the array. Now you can go out of bounds, and some weird things can happen, and C will let you get away with it. So, for example, if I was to say here, if I was to say that I wanted to access element 11, there is no element 11. Let's see what it does. And it's zero. And I was like, whoa, what? What? It doesn't. There's nothing in 11. Well, there could be garbage. There could be that. If you ever uh, work with arrays and you get garbage, then you know why. So that's how you initialize an array. Now, there's another way to initialize an array. You could say, for example, int ages, let's just say something else, um, scores or something. Scores. And we can easily just say, for initialization, we could say something like this, one, two, three, and this will automatically create scores um, all the way up to uh, three, and without us telling it the length, it'll figure out the length. So we can do the initializing initialization just like this, okay? We can also do something, let's say, for example, we want to initialize an array with all zeros in it. So let's say that we wanted to have um, 10 scores, and they're all zeros. Instead of us going 0, 0, 0, we could just simply say like this. It's a shorthand, and I'll have scores of 0. So here, in this case, we have all scores of 0, and we can go to the scores. Let's move this out. Okay, let's, <coughs> let's, let's do it down here and say, let's copy this as a matter of fact. So we have scores, okay, we're going from zero to nine again, and we go with scores. And of course we have to go with scores here. And then we run it. And you can see that they're all zeroed out. What happens if I don't initialize the array to zero? What happens then? You see this garbage in there with the scores because I did not initialize it. So it took the place of memory and said, okay, give me that place of memory. And whatever's there is there. It's kind of like you move into an apartment and nobody's moved out or they moved out, but they left all the junk behind. You know, so putting the zeros, like going in there and cleaning the apartment before you move in, it's like, oh, I know exactly what's in there, nothing. You know, the landlord goes in there after somebody moves out, cleans it out, and that's exactly what you're doing here. But just one thing though, what happens to initialization after this? So one thing you can't do, and we, we haven't got into pointers, and we're not gonna get into pointers at this time, but you can't, once you initialize it there, you can't turn around and assign turn around and assign an array to it again. Now you can say, for example, scores equals uh, zero. You can't say that. Should get a compiler error, so yes. It won't do that. You can't initialize it anymore. You can't say scores 10 equals zero. You can't change, you can't make the array grow. Um, you can't say this, it, it's not gonna let you. So what do you do? Once you actually allocate the memory by creating the array and you um, uh, waive your initialization capability, no longer can you initialize it like that. Now you get into having to loop through things or access things. So an array element is the same way, for example, as an individual element. So if you wanted to, Let's get rid of some of this to just to kind of clean things up. So let's say, for example, that for my ages, right? Or let's go with scores and scores is already said. For my scores, I could say something like this. For 
integer i equals zero, i less than i less than ten, i plus plus. And then I could actually initialize the value. And then I could say scan if. And you got to follow the same rules. And now this time, though, how do I access that? Well, remember that I said if you do this, score i, that's by value. So you actually have to add the address of operator, just like that. Once you do that, okay, there you have it. So it's 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 scanning the scores. Now, how do let's say I wanted to once again I want to now print the ages. I take this and I want to print them. <clears throat> oh, it's not ages scores. What am I talking about? So there, there we can gather the values, and let's not go so high. Let's only go to like five. I don't want to enter ten ages. So once I do this, I'm going to scan. Then I'm going to display the scores. So let's run it. And so scores, I would say this one is three. Then I want to enter four. Then I want to enter five. Then maybe one, and then maybe. 1.23 and <clears throat> my implements loose. Let me fix this. Let's run. Let's go four and two and three and six and seven. And you can see it displays whatever I entered. So you can treat the element, the entire name of the array with the index of the element and treat it as you would any other variable. Now, why would arrays become important? Well, they can become important for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of times when you may have some kind of lookup table or anything. And in this case, we're only dealing with a single dimensional array. You can actually have multiple dimensional arrays. So when you get into multi, multi, multi-dimensional arrays, you can have arrays with two dimensions. Think of it like a, a grid square or something like Grid squares like the the that square that graph paper where you have squares and you have rows and you have columns and you can access elements. Say for example, you had an insurance rate column where maybe uh, it's the intersection between age for e e each age group and based on their credit score or something like that, they get a certain rate and you look that up. You know, so you access it. Now, when you get into uh, multi-dimensional arrays, let's say, for example, we say rates, like it's insurance rates, we can say, we won't go that large, we'll go three by three, this nine grid, right? So in this case, we can say, we can loop through, and in order for us to loop through, we talked about loops, but one thing they didn't even talk about was nesting loops. So if I wanted to initialize this, I believe I still can do this. And it'll be okay. Now to initialize it uh, the other way, you can also initialize it like this. So it's basically, and we'll do an experiment because I'm not even sure right now which is which. So we do this: separate each inner element, of commas. So we have three within three, right? I think we do. We have that. So we have we're gonna have three elements. So now we're gonna go one, two, and three. And for this one, we're gonna go four, five, and six. And then we say seven, eight, and nine. And we want to <coughs> go ahead and display this. So how do we display this? So easy way would be to do a for loop. We do I. 
And you may wonder why I do I all the time. And it's just very common, very familiar. I don't know what it is. My theory is that back in the days, for example, when you talk about Fortran, Fortran had four loops. Well, did it have four loops? I think it did. We used to use, not use them because we hadn't learned them. That's what it was. So Fortran did have four loops, I think. Or I, whether it did or it didn't, I don't remember. The fact is that in Fortran, it was a rule that anything that was like I through N was an integer and everything else was like a float or something. Like the variable had to start with I through N. A weird rule, but that's what it was. So anyway, so now we say I less than, right? And say three, I plus plus. And then we have to nest our loop and we say four, in, and we can just do the next thing, use j, j less than 3, j plus plus. <clears throat> and now we can print whatever is in there. So let's see what's in there, okay? <clears throat> Percent D, okay? And we're going to, we're going to print the rates, right? And we're going to say I, J, just like that, right? So we're going to print I and J. Maybe we want to know what the actual rates I and J I. I want to say percent D, percent D. And we'll have I, and we'll have J, and then the rates, right? <clears throat> and we print this out. Oh, let's, let me, let me, <clears throat> let me add the return, the new line piece. Okay, so we see that zero, zero is one, <clears throat> zero, one is two. So it depends on how you look at it. If you look at these as your columns, your rows, whatever, the way it lays out to me, this is each one of these is a row. So that would be the first. And then the other one is the column. So zero, one, in other words, row zero, column zero. So it's row and column. Row zero, column zero, column one, column two, and so on. And you can imagine, like, if, for example, if I truly had rates, for example, so they were insurance rates, and I did have them, I could actually do it like this and actually have not float. I could have it like this, and here I could display it like this and actually have, you know, say, for example, that I had uh, percentages or something, and I had, like, you know, uh, let's say a decimal number is 0.7 or... 0.75 and so on and 0.65 and then I want to display that. So remember they're they're the same type. You can't change the type. You can't hold different types. I mean you can do it through implicit conversion, but you know you can hold different types. So that's your multidimensional. You can do three-dimensional. I will leave that exercise up to you. I'm not gonna even attempt to touch it, but it's there if you really needed to do, but believe me, it's not something that you know, you can't, won't create some confusion at some level. You really got to control that. Uh, a good example of where you, you would also use a multidimensional array, you could do it with like a deck of cards where you have, you know, the faces and uh, not the faces, the, yeah, I think it, it's uh, the, 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 the uh, suit and the face value or value of the card. So for example, you have hearts and you have, you know, all the way from two through ace or ace through king, however you want to look at it. So you would have that. And and that's where you have the arrays. Now you can do a lot of things with arrays, but now like I said, once after you initialize it, you can't you have to access it by index. Now one thing I didn't talk about in this case is that you can actually use, for example, the size of operators. So let's do it with a single dimensional array. Let's get rid of this. And let's do a single dimensional array. So we say int scores, once again, back to scores. And we say 10. And you can actually find it 
And you could say, for example, for an i equals zero, and you can use the size of operator scores i plus plus, and then you could say printf scores percent d, and then you say uh, percent d, and you say i, and then scores. Wow, what did it do? It looked like it went way over. And I wonder why that was. Oh, <laughs> duh. Because I didn't say I list in size of scores. So, so let's, let's put it here so we can see it more clearly. And you notice that I didn't initialize it. I intentionally did that so you could see all the garbage that it puts in there. But let's just go ahead and initialize it. So let's initialize the, the array. Hmm. Not what I was expecting, definitely. May have to revisit this. I'm not understanding this. I equals zero. I less than size of. And size of scores. Oh, I will have to come back to this. This is not what I expected. And score size of scores. Do I not have this right? Um, let's take a look. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's my fault. So actually, the reason that this happened. Is because I'm getting the size of scores. So actually, what I have to do is I have to take the size of the array and divide it by the size of the value. So instead of doing this, I have to say something like this: int uh, size equals uh, size of scores divided by uh, the first score. Type. So it's like, for example, it would be scores zero. So in other words, I'm, well, not that size of So because the actual size of is going to give me the full byte, size of the array in bytes. So in order for me to get it, I have to say size of the array in bytes, well, it's going to give me 32. Okay, um, this actually gave me more than that. Let's say 40 times 4. Oh, 40. Yeah, 40. Because it goes from 0 to 40. So 10 times 4 because the int is 4 bytes. 4 times 10 is 40. So what it was doing, it was giving me the, that. The It was going from 0 to 40. What I have to do is take the array, the size of the array, which is 40 bytes, and divide it by an element within the array, which, for example, we take score 0, which is 4. So we take 40 divided by 4, it gives us 10, and that gives us our size. And now we should have the right thing here. Let's run it, and there you go. And so <clears throat> I think I covered just about everything. Oh, one thing that I didn't cover in arrays is that you can actually take the arrays and you can do all sorts of things like you can say scores, for example, let's say if we, I said int my score or something, I don't know. And I say equals, I can say scores three, for example. But you could do certain things like you could say, you know, my score index equals three. Say for example, right? So you could say my score like that and access the third element within the array. Or you could say something like this. And people do that. I don't like doing that personally because it gets confusing because you have plus plus and you have plus plus i. I won't get into the details of that. Um, just know that one of them, it would be the equivalent of saying, uh, let's just say it was i. I plus plus, 
and then accessing it by saying scores i right that's when you do the that's when you do the this is, would be similar to doing the plus plus i. It increments the i and then hands it off to the index. And then, but if you did the other way around, if you did, for example, um, if you did the other way around, then it would actually do hand off the index and then do that. But that trips up a lot of people. It trips me up and I have to think about it and I'd really rather have maintainable code, even if I have an extra line than actually having confusing logic like that. It just gets crazy. You can also do math in here. So for example, you can say i times 2. So you can access every nth element of the array. All I can say is don't try to get too clever with arrays because you will get confused. And when you're accessing elements, give them names. Use variables if you should. For example, if you have a deck of cards, use the variable 2 and the variable card value or face value or whatever. I can't even think of the proper name for card, but that's what you want to do. So um, I covered, I think everything I set out to cover. And I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. And if you like this video, uh, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.